The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, welcome to Monty Whitfield's Art Show. Um, on this episode, we have a visual artist, very special visual artist from France, and her name is Albine Vermeaux Go. Hey, I got it right. Um, <laughs> how's it going, Albine? So nice to have you on our show. This is Janice. She's our co-host. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, just going to go over your bio a little bit, ask a couple questions. Um, now, uh, you, you grew up in France, That's and it correct. says here on your bio that you have uh, strong emotional ties to Italy and that many of the paintings that you do paint are uh, evocations of familiar scenes from native countries and places you have visited. Now, from what I see on your travel log mm -hmm. of a life, <laughs> you've been to Japan, You've mm -hmm. been to South America, Cape Town. You and South I need, Africa. So you and I need to talk about that because okay, my family, definitely... my family has a connection. Oh, Lockenville, my oh. sister's first marriage. Uh, the kids, Lockenville, are the number one band in South Africa, oh. and they're actually going to play with Justin Bieber in the summer, or they've already played. Wow! So that's our connection. <laughs> then their last name, the original father, the biological, was Chaplin, connected to Charles Chaplin. Wow. So there's a whole Cape Town connection that you and I can talk about. Oh, yeah. Okay, but now we're getting Japan, now we're in South Africa, and now we're in Italy, France, Europe. and Italy, and Europe, and all these places you've traveled. So can you discuss some of your the effect that all that traveling has had on your life, and where you've been, and what mm -hmm, you've learned at mm -hmm. each stop? All right. Well, basically, I have uh, traveled a lot, I think. I was born in France, and I spent my youth there until I was uh, 22 when I came to the U.S. Uh, almost permanently. But I had been here as an exchange student when I was 18 in Arizona. So Arizona, from France to Arizona, that was already a big change. Yes. And I think there uh, was probably my first introduction to big country, big skies. Okay. You know, which uh, the mountains in, in, Arizona. in, in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, right. Then I went back to France and uh, then really had fallen in love with the U.S. as a young person because of freedom and everything else. And uh, came back here permanently. And uh, because I, was a, I became a career woman, my uh, business took me on a lot of trips to Europe. Mm. And uh, the way it has influenced me, you know, my art has been influenced by my childhood memories, you know, to start with, uh, which is, you know, the fields, the mountains. I grew up close to the Alps, so always, you know, the mountain range uh, in view. And uh, it was in the country, so the fields, the farming, uh, all this was very important. Mm, then, interesting. Yeah. How long have you been painting? I have been painting actually for a short time. And in oh, fact, actually, really? only since uh, I looked at it today, 2009. So that would make it 14 years. Oh, that's which is not... produced a lot of beautiful work. Well, thank you. Yes. So, um, and the travel came for business and also for pleasure and okay. also family. Now, I noticed that you have some collectors in Japan yes, I and do. other parts of, um, of the world. It actually says here, private collections in the U.S., yes. Europe, and Japan, and that you are currently uh, have your studio in uh, Hollis there. That's correct. And actually, you have actually exhibited at some really neat places, the Lexington Art Show. Now, how did you get involved with the Lexington Art Show? Well, because, uh, you know, initially I started exhibiting uh, probably... Um, I'm going to say three years after I started painting. Okay. Because somebody really influenced me and gave me the uh, confidence okay. that, okay, my art was uh, so who okay. Was that? And, and that person was Beth Welton, and I am sure you know her. Yes. We used to oh. share a studio in Nashua. Very inspirational because I created my first uh, painting. First, I created my first paintings in Paris, but then when I came back, you know, uh, I shared the studio with her, and uh, she had opened the gallery, put a piece of my artwork, and uh, I said, well, okay, maybe I am an artist. <laughs> now, it also shows here that you're with the uh, uh, 
uh, the Hollis uh, Hollis Art Society. Which That's they correct. Would, it'd be nice to have them on. I, I know Pat Hurd. I know she does every, wears all these different hats there. Um, so the Hollis Fine Arts now, I mean, the Hollis Artist Society, could you give us a little bit of information on that and where they yes, show artwork? Uh, and yeah, actually it started uh, not so long ago. I'm going to say perhaps five years ago okay. mm -hmm. in Hollis. And it was the uh, at the time the idea of uh, three ladies and uh, one of them being Julie Ledoux, you know, who has the uh, Dream Barn Cafe. Oh, the Dream Barn. Yeah, and they I, said, you I know, went there Hollis. once and yes. showed my work, and yeah, you've and been so there. Well, yes, very, yes, very much so. And another lady, I forgot her name, who... Uh, can, can we just backtrack for a second? Yeah. I think when you and I spoke before, you had mentioned that the Dream Farm Cafe is coming back. I believe that uh, from a one in or the two fall, year sabbatical, whatever exactly, you want to call it. Exactly, exactly. Oh, good. Yes, because that is an important venue in now, Hollis. Now, in terms of the venue, can you explain what that venue is, how they format it? It's really interesting. I think they have writers and artists well, and jazz. Yes, and uh, you know, the family, the Ledoux family is very uh, musical. Mm, uh, okay. Julie Lavender, you know, that's her art name is a songwriter and a musician and, and a, a jazz singer and a jazz singer and uh, so she started you know it was a dream of hers oh that's how she got the name for it yes yeah, dream, yeah. Farm dream farm cafe, cafe. and oh. when they moved from california into hollis you know she wanted to do something different and uh, i knew her as uh, in fact i met them when they just moved from california to hollis Right. Because I, I do teach French and Italian too. Right. So you so taught I was their teaching children French. herself and her children. Oh, okay. Oh, great. And uh, so she had this idea to bring some art in Hollis, and she has a beautiful space. Oh, yeah. And all and the musical it. instruments. They pack it every time. And they pack it. It's oh. a lot of work. And but, they, they um, have a piano there. They usually oh, they, have a piano, uh, different piano group. I mean, a different jazz group. And every they bring month. in a guest every month. And, uh, you know, it's, it runs September through May. Are they going to have it this year? I, uh, the last I, uh, she told me, she was going to restart it. And are you going to be great. at Greeley Park this year? As I, my I am tent, looking forward to it. Buddy, right next door. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. You going to be at Greeley? Yes, I am this oh, year. Oh, great. I'll I, see you uh, there. <laughs> I skipped it a few more. years. I skipped it a few years, but I'm going back. Great, Good. great. Because I, I like it. It's the 60th year. This it is, year. yeah. Now you've been in some other interesting uh, galleries. Um, you've been at the Grace Gallery in Lexington, then Logan International Airport well, that was Art Gallery. Special. Talk about that. Yeah, that Boston. That was very there. special. We, uh, um, I had a contact, and uh, Logan was trying to, in a sense, you know, enhance uh, Terminal One. And Great upon, idea. <laughs> and upon arrival, you know, there is you, when uh, you arrive, you pass through a long gallery and uh, with nothing on the walls. And uh, they had decided that it would be nice to have wow. artists. So I knew the person and uh, I had met her actually at a show. And she said, oh, do you, would you be interested in organizing something right. for Logan? So I pulled together. Oh, so you actually helped to organize I, I organized that. it. Now, who yes. were the other artists? I think Marilene Sawoff was uh, yeah. one of them. I, what I did is I decided to make it an international show, and we called it. Oh. Uh, and I picked uh, people from different countries. So we had one U.S. representative. I was representing who, France and who Italy. Who was the U.S.? Uh, Mary Bergen. Oh, okay. She was a, you know, friend, artist friend. Okay, she's local here? Uh, she lives in a new, it's not New Bedford, but uh, Mount Vernon or close by Oh, there. Mount Vernon, okay. Yeah, okay. I may be a little off. And who my... are some of the other artists? And, and what uh, country Nita, did they represent? Nita uh, Leger from what, France. From France, okay. I, I did and you're France, from France? Italy. No, but I did France, Italy. Oh, okay. I have Italian blood. Oh, so you did that, so you kind of... You nice kinda, blend. Kind of shared. So I jumped both, and we also had... So Marilyn was representing Lebanon, yeah. and we had a fellow representing China. Oh, China, wow, and, uh, nice. And let's see. Oh, I saw him in your art thing, I think art you, blog. I, I think. think you know who I am talking about. Who? I'm sorry, uh, his Chinese? name. Yeah. Oh, he, I've seen him in your art blog 
some pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so I just wanted to get a general idea. So now, the, the, how do you think the show looked? I mean, it uh, looked fantastic. Yeah. Now, how much room did it take? I oh, mean, it was like down uh, a whole terminal length. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. From here to all the way as far as I can wow, see. Wow, that's a walls. lot of space to show artwork. So you yeah. guys really just put it out there. Yes. So, and I had created a big, big piece uh, just for the show. Oh, really? Called Infinity. Mm. <laughs> oh, I. Th oh, okay. That's a good now, one. Now, I also want to go through your other, uh, you've been at the Eclectic Art Gallery in Nashua. Now, that was a really cool gallery in Nashua. It kind of was like a, a comet, you know, it had the beautiful flame and you saw it. Very contemporary. And then it was gone after, like, there was a two-year thing. Why? It was almost like Boston Gallery style, being right in Nashua downtown. And actually, it was uh, opened by Beth Welton, you know, my studio right. partner, Oh, okay, okay. Who had uh, a big a, vision, a beautiful vision. They had a big oh, vision. Yes. They a definitely deal. did. It was a big vision, a Boston vision. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't see one painted moose. Or lighthouse no. in the. <laughs> Where's no. the where, you can shut up the moose in front of the lighthouse. No, and she know? brought the beautiful artists, you know, oh. like Muller, uh, Muller. Uh, what a, what an yeah. honor to yeah. be there mm -hmm. for its two year whatever I period. Know, two years. I wish they could have lasted longer. We just have a different art market here. That's I, I you know, Jess and I have talked about. We have our own ideas on that now. The Sharon Art Center, I love. So mm -hmm, talk mm -hmm. about that because. Well, the Sharon Art Center. That's a cool place. Um, I did take one. Uh, I am mostly self-taught, but I have taken a couple of uh, classes there. Oh, you have. Yes. Which uh, classes? I took uh, actually one was a painting, a portrait painting. Oh. Which they have good, uh, I good probably, uh, you know, I learned some basics, but right. I consider myself flunked. <laughs> well, you, oh, no. but I intend to. Uh, you get into anatomical. It's, a very it's very. It's actually. It's it, it, It's very. It's very mathematical, and it's and once you get past that, there's the feeling. But that's a very. Yes. I mean, specific. it's hard to be painting every different type of of thing you can paint out there. Right. Right. And portraits are a specialty. Yeah, even um, even though I, I, you know, we probably talk about it, uh, Le Fauve, you know, Fauvism, but yes. uh, my intention uh, possibly is to go a bit in that direction with portrait painting, but Wait in a, a minute. very... Can, can, can we stop? Yes. Because when we get to Fauvism, I have something that I got off the internet, and it's the sourcing on it is called Fauvism and Beyond, and I'm just going to read this because one does need a reference when one talks about art movements, because there are art movements that I don't consider esoteric, but they had a short life. I believe Fauvism was a couple years. And there's so many movements in the history of art that this needs to be explained because uh, not everybody knows what, what Fauvism is. So uh, I'm looking at a picture right now of a Paul Gauguin piece mm -hmm. that has in the background, it's called Vision After the Sermon. We just don't have the... Uh, but the, the important thing is not the image itself. Well, the, actually, the important thing is the image itself because in the background, Paul Gauguin used very bold, that's the key to, to Fauvism, bold colors. And it was really, Gauguin was the father of that. Yeah. Mr. Tahiti himself. So I'll just read a little bit about, the, to define what Fauvism is. Fauvism has its roots in the post-impressionistic paintings of Paul Gauguin. It was his use of symbolic color that pushed art towards the style of Fauvism. Gauguin proposed that color had a symbolic vocabulary. Color has a symbolic mm -hmm. vocabulary. What does red mean to you? What does bright green mean to you? What does bright red mean to you? Symbolic vocabulary. It's similar to what musicians call sonic architecture. The notes, the sounds. For the artist, it's the color. Symbolic vocabulary. Just wanted to stress that. Yeah. Which could be used to visually translate a range of emotions. Mm -hmm. In Vision After the Sermon, where Gauguin depicts Jacob wrestling with an angel, he paints the background a flat red to emphasize the scene and the feeling. 
to bright red to emphasize the scene and the feeling. Fauvism, bold colors. So then we go on and on. By breaking the established descriptive role that color had in painting, he inspired the younger artist of the day to experiment with new possibilities for color in art. For color in art. What is the role of color in art? That's a whole separate eight-part show unto itself. <laughs> now, we do have Henry Matisse image. And the Henry Matisse image is very interesting because really you have two different painters who were involved in Fauvism that were the leading premier folks. One was Andre Durand, if I'm saying mm -hmm. that correct, and the other is Henri Matisse. At the start of the 20th century, two young artists, Henri Matisse and Andre Durand, formed the basis of a group of painters who enjoyed painting pictures with outrageously bold colors. Outrageously bold colors. For that time. The group were nicknamed Le Fauve. Am I saying that right? Le Fauve. Le Fauve. Thank you. Thank Which you. means untamed animal. Untamed, or here it says wild beast, same and in yeah, French. Well, their, their, their title was coined by the art critic, well, you would know better than th this writer, okay. Louis Vassels, who was amused by the exaggerated color in their art. At the Salon in 1905, he entered a gallery where Lafave were exhibiting their paintings, surprised by the contrast with typical Renaissance sculpture that stood in the center of the room. He exclaimed with irony, what is that? Donatello a Melu de Fave. Ah, Donatello au milieu des fauves. Donatello in the middle of the wild beast. And the name stuck. <laughs> and the name stuck. So that's, that's our little uh, uh, intro, <laughs> tutorial, whatever you want to call it, on, on the, mm -hmm. the movement. That's the image, actually. Yes, have. I love that. Yeah, I, that's uh, the one that's going to show. Uh -huh. OK, so now let's get into some uh, questions. Um, Janice, you can start as the co-host. All right. Um, when you paint. Mm -hmm. um, do you look in? How are you looking at, at what you're doing? You're coming from within, looking De at, definitely going around, come, going behind? You know, uh, if you're talking emotionally, definitely coming from within, you know, because oftentimes, you know, when I start a painting, uh, you know, I have a vision but then, uh, you know, as I get going, you know, it pours out. And uh, in a sense, you know, I am somewhat of an untamed painter. Untamed? Untamed painter because yes. I don't necessarily follow a technique or, uh, you know, I just let it go and move along. So it flows. It flows. And uh, sometimes it flows very well. And sometimes mm -hmm. uh, in the direction that I had not selected. <laughs> and that can get exciting. And that gets exciting. So then, do you ever find yourself that you you quit on a painting or you go back to, just set it aside and go back to it? Oftentimes or? I do go back and uh, even if I like the painting, I am very much, in fact, very much influenced by Les Faux because they're my favorite uh, group, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, because I do like the color. So, even though I feel the color is strong, I am going to go back and add color in uh, different ways, you know. I never, mm -hmm. um, it's very rare that I do a painting in one, uh, one trait, let's say, like, one session. Can I session. ask you one question? Yes. We have uh, nine of your paintings that we're mm -hmm. going to show as the show goes on. Uh, the one uh, called uh, Jazz Notes. Jazz you Notes. You have a painting called Jazz Notes. Mm -hmm. And what I like about jazz notes is it seems that the painting flows like the music and mm -hmm. you have the effect of Favism in the painting jazz notes mm -hmm. because you have reds and greens and every color is bold. There's not it's one bold. muted color in the whole painting. Right. And in fact, the little yellow spots are the notes because I, oh. I use it vertically, you know, like I showed, I displayed... Oh. Vertically with the notes up, you know, Oh, flowing. so it's like more like that. Okay, Yeah, I see. you know, oh, this being okay. the upper part. Oh, um, all right. Yes. So it's a little switcheroo on yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. Now you have another one um, 
called Creation. Mm -hmm. The painting's called Creation. And Creation seems a lot like, um, I mean, it has a similar feel as jazz notes, and yet you have the bold colors. Mm -hmm. And then I guess you could even consider white a bold color or a muted color, depending upon the colors around it. In this case, it's a bold color because of the mm -hmm. contrast, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, mm -hmm. in fact, this particular painting here, I was uh, told by an art critic, a classic art critic, that um, the palette was not uh, in symphony. <laughs> in a sense, you know, the colors did not belong to a palette that is a classic palette. And my uh, retort was, but in fact, this is what I want. You know, I want something bold, different. Mm -hmm. And it's just, to me, it's harmonious. Right, I think, and that's I, good enough. I think the <laughs> reference from the critic is, and, and critics can be technical, heavy, yes. and maybe emotion, not as emotion driven mm -hmm. and feeling. Sometimes they, they depend upon that. And um, what they're referring to is the compatibility of colors. Yes. Like, for instance, Orange and blue, they're compatible. Mm -hmm. Red and green. You see a lot of homes with hunter green and maroon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, purple and yellow, the, the, those beautiful French countryside type colorations, mm -hmm. you know, the fleur, fleur de lay, the yellow and, and yes. purple, you know. And then they have the secondary compatible colors and then they have the tertiary. Okay, so now we have all that classical stuff out of the way. Primary, secondary. Tertiary. Tertiary. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter from an artist's point of view because you know that classical stuff, but now you're going beyond that. You're, you're actually mapping your feelings. Exactly. And because it's creation, you probably didn't care at the time. Excuse me, I just get a little emotional about this. You probably didn't care about, is this a primary, no, secondary, right. tertiary? Are these compatible? Your feelings. Interesting how you don't appear to be a rebel you, you, you feel you know, you're very calm and you're very cultured and yes, you have beautiful yes, work. But, but at the same time, but you know, you're definitely making a stand never here. never judge a book by its cover. Uh, you're definitely That's making right. a stand here. <laughs> because, you know, in a sense, I, am, uh, I look very organized and all of this, but uh, you do it's what not you... it's not, this is why I am still self-taught because in a sense, I am very independent. I, I like to do my... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've followed your work, even though you and I haven't kept in contact, uh -huh, per uh -huh. se. This is why I call myself an eclectic... Yes. Imaginative. Well, you must have loved being at the eclectic gallery. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. say, I am... I am, but I, have become, the, I am in the yeah. menu of what I am. Right. But I did not know quite at the time that I was going to be so eclectic, you know. Okay. It's all evolving. Uh, you know, and I still think, you know, I want to go bolder, you know. Oh, okay. Good. Good, good. Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of folks that uh, are New England collectors of note that, that like the bold look. Mm -hmm. that, and not just bold per se, they just want great art. And a lot of times with great art, you have to be bold because if you don't have a bright color, then the dark color next to it's not going to mean anything. Mm -hmm. you, 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 one of those things, you need the light if you have the darkness. Right. You, you need the darkness for the light, the light for the darkness. Yes, it's like if, uh, you know, my choice, if I were to build a house, it would be mostly just about all very uh, white, off-white, very uh, delicate, but in it would be very bright artwork. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. To yeah, so it, in a sense it's, uh, you know, it's like a, a dichotomy in a sense. It, in well, it's, it's like you're building an art gallery for yourself. You got it. <laughs> what do you think you would like to tell people about starting into the arts, um, middle or later, you know, after they've had a career in something mm -hmm. else? Um, do you find it stressful or you just love to throw yourself into it? And well, uh, you know, uh, I am of course a typical person who started later in life and uh, even though I had always loved art, I never had the opportunity to spend some time on it because I was a career woman, I was raising a family. So only when circumstances uh, allowed it uh, did I get a chance to paint and that was when uh, you know, my career was uh, ending and my husband 
got the chance to be transferred to Paris. Mm -hmm. And I had not lived in Paris as an adult, you know, so the environment was so inspiring. I did all the museum, all the shows locally, you know, the little... Um, so you love it. Paris. So I loved it. And uh, one day, just passing by, uh, in fact, it was a bakery, and there was an ad, and uh, right around the area where we lived, there was an art association, and one of the artists was giving a course. Oh. And I said, well, why not? And uh, I went there and did my first painting, which is still... And when it was finished, I was like, wow, I love it. So what was your first painting? My first painting, and I am still selling giclés of it, it's called uh, Under the Tuscan Sun. Oh, and, oh okay. Oh, that's, and you know it has those That's the one with the rows sun. of trees, you got right? It, the you the got junipers, it. whatever? Yes, right. Oh, and I was I totally... That, yeah. And I, I did not know anything, and uh, she just gave us oil paints. And she <laughs> it's said, a beautiful painting. She said, you, you go at it. And she said, good, good, keep going, keep going. And... I said, wow. What's that, under the Tuscan sky? Under the Tuscan sun. Under the Tuscan sun. Yes, yeah. right. So it's, uh, it was my first painting, actually. Um, there, there is great something, start. There, there is something <laughs> yeah. about the Tuscany landscape that I think ev 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 evokes a emotional response from an artist to paint it. There's something yes, right, right. very... Um, um, you know, the, it's the yellows, perhaps, oh, yes. uh, the fields. And, it just kind of draws uh, you. And yeah, it does. And uh, I have gone to Tuscany many times, and uh, you know, I still paint some Tuscan scenes. And in fact, the oh, last good. one I'm doing, I have restarted because I have found that people do love uh, French scenes, you know, landscape like mm -hmm. this one. Now, when, when you paint a landscape, is it is it plain air? And can you explain to people, if it is plein air, uh, can you explain to people what plein air means? Plein air means plein, means full, air means air. So it's full of air in the sense it means outside in uh, open so air. So that's where you would the take a little maybe you go outside. that opens up as a canvas, right. which has your, your uh, oils your, or your acrylics right, or watercolors, right. and you actually can paint right out write out what, and, whatever uh, you're painting, you can set it up. You can paint it immediately. Chair. Yeah, a little chair yeah. and a little umbrella. <laughs> little fold-out chair <laughs> little fold out, out of your backpack. Out of a, and no wind, if, if please, if you right. please, before right. it knocks your ears all over. Right. right. But uh, most of my work is done uh, from uh, photography, okay. photos so you take. Okay, take a picture of it, then go to the studio. And go to the studio. And paint it. Because now, my experiences with plein air have been disastrous. I wanted to <laughs> ask you, you have a painting that I absolutely love, and I believe you have even more of, of this series, but there's one called Water Lily. Oh, the, now, is this one here or yeah, the other one? Yeah, Water Lily. Now, was that a Monet-inspired painting, or was that just an inspired painting overall? Uh, no, actually, it's not Monet inspired, but uh, I have I had seen so many of uh, Lily's by Monet and his painting, even though I think he overdid it. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably selling. He did, uh, he did that little cookie cutter to just yeah, to kind of bring the. You know, he has a museum there yeah, where the wall, the wall as big oh. as this oh, is a huge. Oh, what's the name of the museum? You know which one? Museum? It's the. Um, Janice knows it, I think. Yeah, it's close to the, name Muette, of the, the Metro La Muette. To uh, Ernie? Marmottan. Oh, Marmottan. Marmottan. Have you yeah. been there? Yes. Marmottan? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I always like to have uh, one lily painting in my stock. <laughs> oh, because I think the people love it. I do it. two lilies. And I, uh, love I have that done. Lily. Oh, you like that oh, one? Oh, I love that. Oh, I thought you liked the other lilies. The well, lily there's pad. another lily you have that was at Barnes and Nobles, and it was more like a dark green. Oh, it could be the lily pad. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, and my lilies have, uh, I have painted them. And we'll talk have later because that's, that's one I would like. Okay. Um, okay, so then you have one called um, Walk in the Field. Yes. Can sir. you give a little explanation of that one? Uh, it's called Walk, Across the Walk field. in the Field. Oh. <laughs> and it's a fellow in uh, wearing blue, uh, green field. He's got a little knapsack. It's a worker in the field, rem reminiscent of France, you know, what I saw as a child coming back from work and uh, going back home 
And uh, typically, there would be a dog following him. Oh, okay. And that's his lunch there. So his dog must must be behind him <laughs> off canvas, right? You got it. <laughs> Toto, whatever. Uh, oh, Toto was difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> darn, darn cute dog, though. So the Toto yeah. uh, did not make it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, he, maybe he's like a diva because he was in that big movie. He got <laughs> everything. Dead. Everything was green. <laughs> Yeah, we're not so, going to talk about green when we're on, on set. So this is the, the feeling. It's more the feeling. And in fact, I just sold this one at my Good open for studio. you. There you go. Boy, you're, you're really selling. You are, you're, well, you're doing phenomenally well. I do have I'm so glad uh, yeah, for you. you. And I follow your art thank blog. You. It's very professionally done. And I may do an art blog uh, once a year. You do like 12 this year or 12 last year. You're very... Oh, in terms of... Uh, you're very... I just much uh, the typist. upload all, the, all at once. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So one, when one goes on your art blog, which I recommend folks going on, uh, was it Albin... Albingallery. com. Can you say it again? Albingallery. G-A-L-E-R-I-E. Right. I-E. Yeah. Uh, dot blogspot. Com. Go check that blog out. It's it's just yeah. magnificent. You're getting a brain scan <laughs> of techniques, of styles, of of colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's untamed madness. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just just how we like it here on on Monty Whitfield's art show. Now you have another painting. Uh, this is a very touching painting. It comes from a very mm -hmm. touching feeling, familial almost. Uh, to me, uh, morning in the morning in the park. It's called morning in the park. And um, talk a little bit about this painting. Please. Uh, this painting, actually, while we lived in Paris, we lived um, close to the uh, forêt de Saint Cloud, the Saint Cloud forest, which is on a hill. You know, Saint Cloud is on a hill. Saint, Saint Cloud. Saint Cloud is the name of the city. Uh, town. Yeah, it's the yeah the little town. Uh, it's just on the edge of Paris, across the Seine River. Oh, across and, the Seine. And uh, okay. that uh, particular wood was a hunting ground, actually, for the king and the queen. So it's Versailles? vast. Versailles. Versailles. Uh, no, no, oh. no. Uh, that was uh, more the uh, travel from the Louvre on horses to this particular area. Oh, okay. And it is full of alleys, and this uh, other painting, my, the first one I saw, the, the Forêt de saint Cloud, is exactly that, those woods in the fall. And it was a morning we were walking, and there are alleys and benches, and uh, the sun just hit it right, and there was this couple mm -hmm. reading their newspaper. You know where the painting is going to be? It's going to be behind us after yeah. the Oh, post that's production. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, and, uh, so what, took, what kind of uh, what, what kind of feeling did you have when you painted oh, this painting? Oh, uh, just uh, so relaxing, so bright, and so intimate. Because I connected intimate, to that know. painting on just a very like mm -hmm. organic, mm -hmm. beautiful, peaceful. I mean, it was almost like, and I don't do this very often. It was almost like, wow, what a nice place to be. Like mm -hmm. you kind of kind of get a feeling like you're you're visiting in on these people and mm -hmm. there's this intimate setting and it just really strikes yeah. home it's like you're it's mm -hmm. very private feelings and as you notice i took the picture of them from behind you right know, they never knew uh i was going to take a picture and i had liked it uh and i have you know and in, in, interestingly enough, uh, the client who bought this one bought this one. Oh, I can see the connection. You can see the connection. Oh, I can see mm -hmm. the connection. And they have another one too, wow. which is, uh, yeah, I have a, just a few collectors that have like a mini gallery. <laughs> yeah, but the, the good, the good thing nice. about the collectors is um, not only the patronage is nice, but it's interesting what paintings your collectors buy. And it's it's nice as the years go by, mm -hmm. you get more and more collectors. Mm -hmm. The collectors you have buy more and more work. Exactly. And then they will refer that to other people and just because they love the feeling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, when they look at that painting. Now, um, just a cup, just one more painting, and then Janice can pick a couple. But I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, Geez, I think I'm taking... Did, did you want to talk about some of the paintings too, Janice? Um, that, uh... Well, I love cellos and I love pink skies. Mm -hmm. And I even, I love this one. 
uh, painting Il Poder. Il Poder, which means uh, the farmhouse, the big Tuscan farmhouse. And again, you know, this is more like in my Tuscany um, style, oh, yellow, which yes. uh, I, I love yellow also, and uh, it seems to be popular. And in, actually, the original of this one went to Germany. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, a collector in Germany. Yes, it was, a, you know, a buyer here who bought it for a friend in Germany who was going on, who loved Tuscany, and it was her birthday, and she took it there. So I thought that was Isn't really it exciting? Nice. Yeah, very it exciting. Is. Yes. I love the way you use yellow and the colors, the mm -hmm. way you use, the juxtapose them. And if you it's notice, great. it's a fairly uh, simple colors, you mm -hmm. know, like a little bit. And they're going to be up here. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. you don't, you don't that's a beautiful one. And chalice, <laughs> that's uh, very different too. You know, it was, uh, I went through a phase of, uh, I call it my twirling phase. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, Sorry, this one Dennis is made me laugh. <laughs> like this one is twirling. Oh, your twirling also. phase. So that's, See, that it's, that's it's chalice, a twirl, you know, chalice like, creation, and, yes, and, I have and quite, jazz notes to some extent. And I but, have quite a few others that are, uh, have those uh, yeah, movements. Yeah, this is actually, to me, almost perfection of when I look at something and you one works it, or maybe this is the first, but this almost seems like the nth. Like you've learned so much at this point and then you've used it. And, yes, um, this one, uh, when I started it, uh, is that I had like no a lotus? idea. Is this like a lotus? No idea what I was doing. Because it's got eight leaves. That's the lotus. I did not have any. Uh, oh, okay. See, that's where, it was, that's uh, where people add, they imbue. Yes, ones. exactly. Now, that's an interesting thing. You'll be at a gallery, and you'll be doing an art reception, and you'll be talking to people, and then people will talk to you, and they'll imbue your painting with some quality Absolutely. that you didn't originally intend. Now, how do you handle that? Like... If somebody says, what does that mean to you? Well, this one... How do you break that down for somebody? This one means something very specific to me because uh, I was doing just shapes and colors and uh, playing with it. Oh, okay. And uh, I had certain shapes and then I had it turned the other way and it looked like a, a chalice. Like a chalice. A chalice, and, but uh, I needed to put some life out of the chalice. So it's spilling flowers. Oh, so the life is coming out, out, of, the out of the chalice in a pretty form, you know. The, so that's what. Now, is this kind of indicative of like a holy grail, or is this just a separate? No, the chalice. When, when I hear life coming out of a chalice, I think of. <laughs> see, this is how people. This is what people do. Yes. But you see, like your paintings. Uh, yes, for me, you know, I was <laughs> raised uh, as, a, as a Catholic. I say I was raised. Oh, there and you go. The chalice and the holes coming out of it. In a sense, there's a beautiful, uh, when you are an artist, I guess you see art everywhere. You don't see necessarily the religious meaning. Or right, whatever, right. But you see the design, and then it all More comes. More like the spirit, the right, passion. Right, and it all comes back to you in a form or another. So that was what it is. Now, you have one called uh, Pink Skies. That's um, just a knockout. Pink Skies, I mean, that's just a beautiful painting. It's just a painting that everybody... Mm -hmm. would want to have. I mean, it's, it's a just very one of recent. Those... I have, uh, when I went to Africa, I went through a series of uh, skies. And, Where in Africa, uh, so specifically? Well, we went... Uh, Cape Town? No, we started first in Kenya. It was a Kenya. trip of a lifetime. Oh, oh tell, me, tell us about it. Yes, it was a safari. Okay. That started in Kenya. Kenya? Incidentally, today, I saw, I don't know if you saw on the news, the airport just burned to the ground. The Kenyan airport? Yeah. No, I didn't. In Nairobi. Nairobi, and the the only they place you can get anything to, the only place uh, you can get that news on is BBC, right? Because I don't know, it was uh, on the internet, I guess. Oh, internet, okay. So yeah. they had no water or something to. They, take they did care not of the fire? have the equipment to oh, put out the fire. My gosh. Wow, and that's a big. It's a it's a country, major yeah. airport. Kenya. Yeah, so we went to uh, Kenya, uh, the, did the, the safari. That can I took, ask you a side note? Are you yeah. a coffee drinker? Uh, yes, I do. But so, do you like the Kenya AA coffee direct I, from Kenya? I don't know it. Because I had a friend who was a banker, went to Kenya, came back with a pound for me, and I and I he and he said, uh, this is like the reserve that they don't let out of the country. Interesting. And it tasted better than the Kenya AA I've had. Anyway, just wow, yeah. 
So I went with my husband, and uh, one of the reason is I have a sister who lived in Cape Town. Cape so we Town. first uh, we first did um, the safari, which was a dream, you know, a lifetime uh, trip, and uh, crossed all the Serengeti. Serengeti is now where is the Serengeti? It's in uh, which Kenya. Which country? In Kenya. In Kenya. And that's a huge. It's a huge for lions, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like a sanctuary for lions, really. The lions. Because they're getting uh, shot. And... Yeah, and we also went at the time of what they call the migration. That is all the wildebeest migrate. And when you see that, uh, it's like you see a cloud in the back, and you, you don't know they're all animals. And then they bypass your jeep, and it's like an invasion. It's very interesting. And then you see, uh, you know, the elephants and the giraffe and the... And then from there we went well, we can, to... I just need yeah. to say, there's something about Africa that's different about other countries because um, you'll get into areas of Africa where it's so rural, so mm -hmm, organic, mm -hmm. that you'll see giraffes and you'll see maybe mm -hmm. a rhino stepping out yeah. a uh, fire. What is that mm -hmm. whole thing about rhinos and stepping out fires? Uh, this I, I guess they're know. like, yeah, they're like the, well, what I heard, my family in South Africa, they're like the firefighters of ah. Africa. If there's a fire burning, okay. they'll come out of nowhere and scare the holy bejeebas out of you, and then they'll put out the fire, Isn't and then they'll because, leave. Isn't uh... because... <laughs> Well, that's great. It's they're the firemen. <laughs> well, there, there's a movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy and everything's oh, yeah, in fast I've seen motion. That. I've and seen they that. have a scene like that. All of a sudden, this couple's are already, that, already yeah. nervous. Mm -hmm. And this, they're already nervous about, because they're from the city of New York and they're not used to all this country stuff. And the rhino comes out of nowhere. They're just like, like frozen, puts out the fire and runs out. And that's it. And they were like, what was that all about? They, I don't know. <laughs> but then I found out that they are the firefighters of Africa. Anyway, yeah. so you, uh, you were you were Yeah, so we went there. Then we countries. went to uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Now, give us an this idea of the where, size of Zimbabwe. Isn't that a huge country? It's uh, big and small, uh, relatively speaking, to some of the other African oh, okay. nations. Okay. But it's, uh, you know, the tough... A political uh, situation with Mugabe now, oh, you know, okay. the almost 90-year-old ruler who is still in power. Mm -hmm. And when we went there, actually, it was very tragic. So it's, it's because like a dictatorship? The you, absolutely. No tourism was there. We were the only oh, tourist uh, guards, you know, it was. But you have the Victoria Falls there, you know, that's oh, what we wanted to see. Gorgeous. Then we moved Oh, the on. Victoria Falls? Yeah. My sister did a, um, where you jump off the bungee. Oh, I see. And the woman behind her said, before she did the bungee jump, my, the woman behind her said, why do you want to do that? And my sister just looked at her and then just proceeded to jump over the... Because <laughs> she could. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Vi Victoria Falls is a stupendous thing to look right, at. Right, exactly. And I then, mean, it's one yeah. of the highest falls in the world, right? I think it's one of the most stunning uh, falls. You know, it's a must-see. Yeah. And then from there on, we went on to South Africa, Cape Town, Cape where Town. Now, my sister used to live. Now, you did a painting that's not in the paintings that we're going to yeah. see. You did a painting, and it was kind of like an idyllic... Uh, township. Township. Yes, the township. Now, what I liked about that painting was that it seems like even areas in Havana or other poor areas where the people are so poor, like in Rio, mm -hmm. the people are so poor, but they can't afford a can of paint. And mm -hmm. they'll make their home so colorful, mm -hmm. there may be mm -hmm. nothing in that home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they may have no water. However, they do have a mobile phone. Oh, that's absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard there are areas of yeah. the world that have no water, no running water, but they have their mobile phone. <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, I called it in the spirit of the township because yes. in a way, uh, you know, as I say, I am an imaginative painter. I have made it a prettier, uh, in the sense I have added a little bit more uh, color. Right. I had make, made it, uh, I enhanced it because uh, actually it's uh, most of them are quite drab right there on the side of the highway right with the, they don't have toilets the toilets are like on the highway and then from there you know they cross the road it's uh, actually you know the poverty is uh, pretty uh, 
depressing, you know. Mm. Yeah, but you, have... you, that's not a depressing picture. No, because... I think what you've done is, because I've lived in the Philippines and mm -hmm, the poverty mm -hmm. of the children selling an individual cigarette you know, and, and, and chiclets. Yes. Chiclets, oh, yeah, chiclets, individual cigarettes. Yes. And some of the children have huge stomachs. Mm -hmm, I won't get into mm -hmm, why. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the poverty, but when you painted that picture, it's almost where art triumphs what it's looking at. Thank because you. I that, agree with that. You're dealing with the poverty. You're mm -hmm. dealing with the grittiness of the street. But yet you're having the beauty, the beauty of art exactly. and your idyllic, not idyllic in a, in a way that's in the clouds, but it's balancing. Mm -hmm, exactly. And one gets to see the beauty. Mm -hmm. It's aside one of my from favorite all the poverty because of the souvenir. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's, it has a very good feeling to it. And you, you can mention where it's available, just not the price. Where, 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 uh, where? I still have the original. Right, and it's available uh, on a it's particular. It's available. It's called uh, in the spirit of the township. Right, and then there was a there was a site that one could go to. I thought uh, it's uh, on my uh, Albin Gallery. Albin uh, Gallery. Spot. Okay. Yes, okay. and then you know if you have my email, just uh, right. Okay. Know, just then call I wanted me. to uh, <laughs> go over the one last painting that we have of the nine, uh, yellow skies. Mm -hmm. Yellow skies. Now, yellow skies is a painting that is another beautiful painting. So you have pink skies, and now we have yellow skies. And you have a totally different feeling mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the palette that you chose. Yes, exactly. Uh, when I did Yellow Skies, uh, I was uh, the one. We always do a pink sunset, and I have many paintings with a pink moon, a pink uh, sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, Flo in Florida, you know, uh, you are more apt to see a yellow sunset, you know like a gray yellow and uh, this represents uh, you know it from a picture and then uh, my own vision of it right. because i may start a painting from a photograph but then as i work it you know um, my own uh, interpretation. Instinct, interpretation thank you comes in and uh, and i work it until i feel happy with it okay now and these are pretty recent these two is there, is there something that you wanted to cover about your art and just mention that we haven't covered here so far? Because we are getting close to... Mm -hmm. uh, well, basically, I want to, uh, you know, to say that uh, you had asked me a question which I thought was uh, interesting, is that do you recommend to people who, after a business career, uh, might want to pick up art? Yeah. Because I believe a lot of uh, us, you know, do want to be a painter, have that instinct to produce uh, some art. And uh, I am going to say that, uh, in a sense, unless you just want to dabble a little bit in it, if you are passionate about it, it can become a very important part of your life. Um, very passionate. Yeah, paintings. and I, I am passionate, and I would have to say it's, you know, it makes it difficult to juggle all your other passions. If you don't have any other, that would be great, but mm. <laughs> if you have other passions, it's to try to keep a balance. And I think as an artist, you probably know it, you work all the time, mentally. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes. You drive, I saw uh, in a tractor pulling some hay, I say, oh, that would make a nice painting. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, you know, you're in the garden. You know. You're always, like, uh, working. You are. And perhaps yeah. it's uh, stressful. And I would say it's not just, I don't know if you find it just relaxing, but it's both. At least for me, I find it both relaxing. It's a new life, let's say. It's, uh, it opens up a lot of different uh, venues in terms of meeting new people, learning, but it's a challenge, you know, it's like. Also, also, aside from that, there's the, you know, the three-year-old kids, they're, they're really good on Facebook and Twitter and all these mm -hmm. things, but, you know, if you weren't, as a teenager, if you weren't raised around computers to, you know, to learn, I believe it's important like, for instance, what is the role of social media in, in your life as an artist? I mean, it's every, every artist who has come of some prominence seemingly has, you know, Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So how, how does that, 
can, can you give some advice to artists that maybe are thinking, ah, I don't want to deal with all that social media stuff? Yeah, I know uh, both kinds. Artists who are totally savvy and use uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, friends, you know, all over. And I do some of this, you know, but uh, in a limited amount. Number one, because I am not as computer savvy as I would like to be. And number two, I think uh, there is always that conflict of wanting to paint rather than uh, the promoting and all that aspect oh, of the business. Can we get, wait a minute, you, uh, you touched upon it's the a subject. Terrible. Can, can you just talk about a minute or two about that, about the promotion aspect? It's, it's almost like a musician. They have their stage performance persona, and then they have the person that sits in their apartment or their home and writes the music, and it's like almost two separate entities within. It's again, uh, you know, that uh, dual conflict, uh, like, uh, you know, you can produce, 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 but if nobody sees it, if you don't do any little promotion, uh, you know. Uh, nobody will know. Nobody will know, and uh, you do get a lot of satisfaction from the feedback or selling. Yes. It motivates you, it validates your efforts. And so it's a, for me, it's a, and I'm sure a lot of artists, it is a battle because I do prefer not to have to do it. So I try to do the minimum, mm -hmm. uh, no, the minimum, uh, with the minimum stress, but you still have to do it. You yeah, know? Your family must be very proud of you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, they don't express it. Uh, so much, but I hope so. <laughs> I think I think all the time when you have a family member that is yes. in the arts, the other folks maybe that are in more traditional lines of work or considered as traditional lines of work, I think people kind of always look up to that on some level mm, because yes. they realize how nice to be able to make a living and to put out some something that's that is uh, mm -hmm. creative. Yeah. Yes, creative, exactly. Being in writing yes. or music. Yes, or, yes. I think. Uh, I think they are, you know, maybe not expressing it so loudly, but it's all right. You know, I know they, some of them are in their homes, so some of my paintings. Okay, now we're basically uh, at the last couple minutes. We need to wrap things up here. Um, uh, here at, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Alpine, for oh. coming in. You've been absolutely you are very awesome. Welcome. You've been a wonderful guest. You thank added you a lot of much. depth to those folks that are, starting, intermediate, and more advanced. Thank you. Um, Absolutely. Okay, so uh, th thank you so much, Albine. Uh, here at Monty Whitfield's Art Show, uh, we would uh, ba basically, we want to let you know that we are always looking for artists, and our definition of artist is a broad definition, all the way from visual artists to folks that uh, write, to folks that make uh, pottery, jewelry, folks, uh, uh, grand furniture, like the New Hampshire Furniture Masters, like to have them as a guest. Authors. Uh, authors, um, filmmakers, I mean, anything musicians. you can think of. Musicians. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're looking for a band, a jazz fusion band, and a friend of mine, we're going to hold uh, auditions for musicians. It'd be nice to have some jazz fusion kind of music. Um, so basically what we do is we visit with international, national, regional, and emerging artists. And that's democratic. I, I feel that that's a democratic thing. We're emerging artists, but however, our high bar is great art. So you can be an emerging artist or you can be international, but we need to consider it, you know, when Janice and I go through the juring process of who comes on to, to the show, you got to have some... Some kind of process, right? You can't let... Uh, but the high bar is great art. Uh, so we define art as all-inclusive. We are always looking for guests. So you can go to my website, uh, and you can contact me through there. And uh, as I said, we are looking for a jazz fusion band, and we're going to release the audition dates on uh, Facebook. And we just thank all of our viewers for watching this show and for patronizing. Uh, we're going to have a whole separate Facebook Monty Whitfield's art page because it's tending to uh, 
tsunami my little art thing I have going. <laughs> so we thought we would make a separate Monty Whitfield's art show page so we could tsunami all at once, have all the tsunami fun in the positive sense, and have a whole separate page, and we can take all the requests and all the, uh, you know, then we do request if somebody does a message or something that they have a link to their work because we need to look at your work, or if you're a musician, we need to hear your music, or a basket maker, or a pottery, or jewelry, and you can be international, national, regional, or as an emerging artist. And it's a, we feel it's a democratic process, but the high bar is great art. <laughs> and thank you for watching some great art, and watching one of the artists that we consider to be one of the greater artists in the area. Al <laughs> thank you. Albin. Thelmo, go. Yeah, I got it right. Perfect. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs>